I hear that even traditional rulers, as far as the Oba of Benin, travel to Abuja, and upon return, the Obas are telling people that they should reconsider having this planned protest. But if we don't have the protest, how is anybody even going to pay attention? If something, if, if somebody's shoe is on your neck and you don't complain loudly about it, why will they take that shoe off your neck? Isn't it peaceful means we've been using all along, trying to dialogue and nothing is happening? So isn't this the next step? How do you convince us that anything is going to change? Because if you're doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, it just doesn't make sense. It's like you're a mad person. So let me let the others in and let's have this conversation. Yeah. The, the matter of the protest, every, every, every democratic setup uh, citizens uh, is uh, they are entitled to uh, expressing their views and their resentment and their whatever feelings they they feel towards the government. And uh, the truth about it, the government has failed Nigerians. Let's say at least more so in the last uh, eight nine years. The APC government who everybody thought was going to come because of all their all their talk, all their braggados, all their promises. Who, who thought? I didn't well, think well, anything. Well, no, no, no. When not 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 many not many people thought. Those I don't who know, know why they were thinking that. Those who knew, you understand me, knew that they had nothing to offer. That they were just empty barrels. Mm -hmm. You understand me. So, but. A lot of, like, you know, a lot of Nigerians are really not enlightened about what goes on in the in the corridors of government. Really? Do you I, think that that's what it is? Do you no. think that that's what happened? See, let let let's let's be factual. Eh? In 2014, APC won the election. Whether yeah. they they read, oh, yes, yes, they yes. Read so. yes, and they won the election based on the fact that Nigerians didn't know better. Yes. Yes, Nigerians were deceived. Even, even then, I was shocked because we had a man who was... We, we were under attack by Boko Haram. You have a man so, who has said categorically an attack on Boko Haram is an attack on us. And then you put that person there after telling you that he's going to help you, you stop Boko so, Haram. Na, na, uh -huh. so, through propaganda, through lies, through all sorts, Nigerians were deceived. And a lot of people, even one year after Buhari or two years after Buhari came in, they saw the light. You understand? But it was too late. They were already in power. And they were even more vicious than the government that they pushed out. So, so can I say something? Can I say something? No, no, hold on. No, I don't want to be a, a, a political. You understand me? But the issue basically is that Nigerians have had it, especially over the last eight. No, we haven't. No, no. Well, now we have had it. This last election was purely rigged. It's. I know, see, in any political dispensation, you will always, no matter how bad the candidate is, you will always have people vote for them. The APC yes. government had shown Nigeria shaggy over the last eight years before 2022. But yet, some people still voted. But majority of Nigerians voted against APC. So the last election was pure. Even the one that Buhari came in on the second term was rigged. This one was even a bigger rigging. You know, worse than Apart that from of it being rigged, there was a lot of intimidation and violence. Yeah, that's that's that's, I the, am a that's, that, that's I the middle name of Nigerian at, politics. Now. I went out at 6 a.m. on that day to vote after I had queued for hours to get to get my PVC because my initial PVC was stolen. So I said, This election, I must to vote. Hmm? So I went to the trouble to apply for a new PVC, went to get my PVC two, three times. And each time I went to get my PVC, you need to see the crowd at Etiosa local government. We were ready to vote. The demography of people who came out to vote, the young, young okay, generation, okay, okay. Like my children's generation, who okay. were never interested in voting. This protest right now are you aware that they've said they've declared oral festival in lagos state 
So yeah. they now think that they can bamboozle the people and cower them into fear by declaring Oro Festival. So because they've declared Oro Festival, they won't come out. They have another thing thinking. They should come again. They should try uh, again. In, no, in now, every... this, look at him. Hold on. My only Hold issue on. is that because of hunger, hmm? because the people are hungry, because the people need money to buy food, my only issue is that I already envisage that there will be a lot of people who come there with ulterior motives to hijack the situation so that they can ransack the lives of ShopRite, Spa, Airbino. There are those who their main motive is just to get food for their homes, to get things that they can lay their hands on to sell and make money. Now, so that's that what we should be, be talking it about. It cannot be avoided. It's that's what we should be talking about. It's going to happen. But so those are, people, those... to, are we going to sacrifice the ultimate purpose of the protest and the strike action because of this few? I don't think so. I think it should go on. I think they should bring the country to a halt. If that's what's going to get the attention of the leaders, then it needs to be done. It needs to be done. So some of the things that we should talk about yeah, are... Suffering. Do you know a tuba of yam is 7,000 naira? Do you yeah. know a custard bucket of gari is 5,000 naira? Do you know that one leg, one lap of goats is 20,000 naira? Do you know that even I, my driver... My, do you know I used to be able to give my driver... 1,000 naira to buy something to eat. Do you know there's no 1,000 naira mama put anymore? You should be holding between 2,000 and 2,005. Now the worst. I had a tear in my tire. I said, go and fix the tire. He said, auntie, there's no more 1,000 naira vulcanizer. I said, not be too, not be too cut, not to, not be. He said, auntie, there's no more 1,500 naira vulcan. I said, you're not talking. He said, auntie, there's no more 2,000 okay. naira okay, you know, you, I had to spend 2,500 naira to fix it here. Okay, Adjiri, we know that uh, things are very expensive now. And we know that um, if, if nothing is done, it will continue. But the question, first of all, is we know that there's a possibility that this protest might go on. And if they're going to go on, so some of the things that we should look at, uh, like what you raised, they've talked about, you've talked about people who businesses that will be at risk because of people's hunger because there's so much hunger and honestly we cannot even if i had a store there and those people came to my store and broke down and took things i, I will know that this is why it's happening so people now need to think about how to safeguard their their property if this thing is going to happen that's one of the things that people should keep in mind right now right and then secondly what is going to happen when they declared oro for that period how are, how are they going to come out when they declare the rule for that? And when they declare Oro, I thought, okay, as a Yoruba man and as a Lagosian, when they declare Oro, is Oro not something that happens? It's not supposed to be for the ninth period. It, it's, yeah, it's supposed to be for the ninth period. But you know that uh, a lot of the uh, traditional le leaders and, um, you know, they've been hijacked by politicians. Yes. They are the ones paying their, you know, he, he who pays the piper dictates the tune. But the protest is during the day, so how is that going to affect you? Yes, the, it's not supposed to. But you know that they can they can always change things for political reasons. But what I'm trying to say is that people should not be deterred by that. Because we're talking about, right now we're talking about life and death. It's gone beyond just protesting because things are bad. Yes, because things people are, are dying. Things, yes. things we send money every day. Yes. Things are horrible. Things are horrible. So this is not about uh, which oro. By the time one thousand people descend on oro, oro will disappear. He, he will run for his life. You understand? So it's not even a matter. If if we are really if the people who want to do the protest are serious, oro is not a matter. It's not a factor. You get what I'm saying? So let's let's leave aside Oro. The bottom line of what I'm trying to say is that there is a major systemic problem in Nigeria because of the way education has been treated over the last 
30, 40 years. Do you know that the rate of education has actually dwindled over the last 20 years? The amount of Nigerians who are properly educated has, has reduced percentage-wise over the last 20 years. So, and what happens is that because a lot of uh, corrupt avenues of making money have been established over the years, a lot of the people who are supposed to have been educated are falling into those cracks and they've risen, and they've, they've, they've risen along the lines of political gangsterism, you understand me, and all, all of that, the, the, the political, uh, uh, what do you call them, boys. Now, what has happened basically is that a lot of people you are talking about, a lot of Nigerians, even among those who are suffering, they don't actually see what a lot of people see that say, okay, we must do this. What do you mean? <laughs> okay. Do you know that area boys, eh, on the day of the protest, area boys are going to be paid. Okay, that's boys that are suffering, some of them, they've not, they've not had, even in the last one week before the process, they might not have had three square meals for maybe twice, two times in a day. Uh, two yeah, times. That's what you mean, that's what you mean. Now, they will, some of those area boys will be sponsored, they will be giving money to come and disrupt the protest. Yes. They will attack people and then people will become scared. And the level of or the 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 impact of the protest can yes reduce. yes now the organizers of the protest must because i mean they must be students of history that has always happened it even happened in answers you understand me the organizers of the protest must be they, they must have a defensive mechanism to ensure that that does not happen that the protest is sustained I know a lot of area boys who have crossed the line, as in they have they have woken up, especially yes. with what has happened in the last two years. But uh, see, you will still find many of them who are core APC supporters, who are area boys who have not crossed the line because somebody is giving them one stipend here and there, and when the time of the protest comes, they will mobilize them to go and disrupt some of the protest activities. So what I say to, to the organizers is that you must be prepared for that. You must provide, you must have your own security unit. You understand me? That whether you, you are going to tell people to everybody to hold one four by four plank to defend themselves, or you're going to provide some security outfit that will protect people as they go into the protest. Because the truth about it is don't think it's going to be all plain sailing. Government is going to do every... That's the tactics of APC. They've been doing it in Lagos. Now it has been extended to the national level. So people should be, should be wise. You understand? People should be wise. And not think that it's going to be plain sailing. That's, that's my take on this. But it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a necessary thing to do at this point in time. And they should go ahead... And go, go ahead with the protest and let it last as long as it can last. A, me, a message needs to be made to the current uh, political system and their cohorts and their international court. Because see, one of the UK is also one of the problems of Nigeria. And we since we have a compromised president, they will have their way with him. What, yeah. what with this planned protest? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the pronouncements by the different UK leaders over the last one year since uh, Tinubu came in. My what? Saying that they support the government, they did this, that they did no. that. But yes, they've done that. Even uh, Rishi Sunak did one three months ago. You understand me? Things are going bad in the country. You're saying you support the government. You understand? So, all of the, because UK benefits from Nigeria. No, they do. All of them do. So, yes. so, but it's it's it has come more from the UK than even the US. You mm -hmm. understand? But UK has made some pronouncements in the last six or nine months that I I'm amazed that things are going bad. You can see. But why uh, are you amazed? No, no, a, no. But that's, that's what we're there for. 
That's what we are. That's what we are all there for. All of us African countries. That's what we are there for. Yo, you know, we're just there so, to hold up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so a lot of the time, people should be aware of. Okay, what when we did the last one? What happened? They are going to try and turn it into a violent environment so that the police and all the law enforcement agents can come in. They might even be the ones who will start doing things that will yeah, make it so because I'm sure those, people will not want to be violent. Yeah, yeah. So all of those need to be taken care of. You understand? For as long as you need to involve the police because they are also suffering. That's the funny thing. I pity anybody who is a policeman right now hmm. because your life is miserable except those hmm. who are who are obnobbing with the politicians or who are guiding the politicians. A lot of policemen, a lot of the law enforcement agents are, are, are miserable. So you need to partner with them so that it does not turn into a violent, uh, so that the message is passed across and the pressure is sustained. Those are the things I, I will say to them. This is not the first time Nigeria is protesting, but this is coming at a time that it is highly necessary. People are suffering. People are before before you make before you you have one or two conversations with people. The next thing is that after one or two conversations, the next thing they are asking you for money, and you cannot you cannot be you cannot be you cannot be thinking oh these people oh, I, oh they don't no the country is difficult. Nobody will be asking for money if they if they didn't. Yes, the country has become right? difficult. So all point. you can do is try as much as possible what way you can help, but. How far can your help go? And how many people can you help? It's just, it's just so sad. And, it, it, and it, the, the, the sad thing about it is that with, with, as bad as, uh, with the way things are bad, our politicians are still living like kings. It's, it's just unbelievable. Thinking of buying are no, aircraft, they're no longer human beings. Those people yes, are no longer human beings. Thinking of buying aircraft, thinking of doing lavish... Uh, 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 what, what word would I use? It doesn't, there's things, no points. Yeah, things that are not necessary. Things that don't add value. But, but, but what I mean is, what, what I find so strange is they want to, they do those things because they want to impress people. Because when you're doing those things, you want to impress people. But the people you are impressing, who? people you are, you are trying to impress now are too hungry. So who are you now going to impress? Are you going to be impressing other people who are on the same level as yourself? We it we've, got, make we, sense. we've got into a position it's where madness, it, we've it's got madness. into a position where people need to start stoning their constituency leaders. That, I've said worse. No, I've yes, we've got into a position. The people are suffering, they don't have food to eat, they don't have money in their pocket, they are suffering. And then you come, you come in one uh one uh, one um, uh, very expensive vehicle and uh, one thing, one thing. A lot of the constituent leaders don't live in their constituency anymore. The ones in so, Lagos. The moment they get in there, they move to Lekki. They don't live in their constituency. So the moment you see them, you don't stone them. For me, um, I think really things things get to a point where you're pushed to the wall. Yeah, Nigerians are pushed. And it's, it's, it's just that um, I it's just that people have different level, different thresholds. Um, but I understand something about <laughs> I understand something about human beings. I understand that if I give you from here to here you are going to extend it to here and once you see that i continue to allow it you yeah. continue until you start sitting on my head and yeah. that is what is happening with 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 the, the with nigerians and the political class because it's gotten to a point where people are talking about i've seen some interviews where they'll be asking somebody why do you need this why do you need that why do you need that and the person says do you, do, don't you know that i need to have this for this blah, blah, blah. you know extra, extremely stupid things like having yeah. to change having to change your furniture every, every year. month every year i don't have to change your car how, how can you be changing your car every year and then the answer is do you know how bad nigerian roads are well the people that you're talking the people that you're supposed to be helping as a leader they don't change their cars every five years. You're talking about, do you know how bad it is? It's not the same roads that we're using. You know? So it's gotten to the point where it is us. It is you when you allow someone to continue to, to piss on your head and tell you that it's raining. It's actually you. Yeah. No, but no. You, say, you say they allow. You say you give them an arm, they take a leg. When Nigerians try to stand up for themselves and defend themselves, what do they do? 
You're talking about stars, right? Yes. 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 I yes. happen to know. I happen to know that the soldiers have been warned. The army has been warned by their head that they should not attack any civilian in this protest. If they see any civilian trying to cause mayhem, they should only arrest. But do you know what the army fear? Do you know what the army generals are afraid of? The police. The police. Because they cannot predict what the average policeman who has a gun is going to do. The army may have control of their actions because they've been given clear-cut instructions not to harm any civilian in this protest. But can we guarantee that the policemen that we have will be level-headed? And if I may, a lot of those who oppose this government are trying to make this about themselves without naming them. They are By trying to hijack it and make it their revolution make it their course they're trying to put themselves in the forefront like they're the ones that initiated the whole thing those who are protesting or those who are organizing it must make sure they're not pundits and they're not pawns in the hands of these people what defense does it make really unlike what defense does it make NSAS, it was way three four days into NSAS that they came together and came up with a community about what they, their demands were that shouldn't be the case now now, long before that first of August date, there should be clear cut non negotiables. It's already three, four days before, there before the be first of August. Clear cut non negotiables. These are our demands. And we're not going to back down till they are met. Now, if that is not defined before the protest starts, trust me, it will be hijacked. Because there are a lot of people who have hidden agendas. There are a lot of people who have ulterior motives. But, 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 but wait, you. I have a question. I have a question. It just occurred to me now. So the protests, if we have protests for 10 days, it means that nobody is working for 10 days, actually, right? So we're not going to go to work. So if we go to protests, there might be um, violence. And some people might get... So if we protest by sitting quietly at home and nobody does anything, like we had at, um, for that June 12th, before the June 12th um, thing, riots, right? What's the difference? Any idea? Here's okay. the difference. Okay. Huh? Whether you sit at home and don't go to work. The yes. People that were so called, the so called ghost workers that were going to the ministries to work, were they doing anything in the first place? Were they making any difference? The difference yeah, so, what, time, so what is the difference, the difference if we protest, if we protest by, by silence and staying home? Relevant services will not be rendered. Relevant services will be... What kind of relevant services? Sure. This is the difference this time. Okay, no, what kind of relevant on. services? So mention, mention so that we can... Like what? Like like hospital, uh, like uh, like uh, like trans hospital, trans right? Trans transportation. Yeah, but where are you the going? Nurses, the, the nurses are not going to work. Yes, yeah, so, so that, that means work. that when we're doing that kind of thing, hospitals and nurses and doctors are exempt. They will go to work because this is life and death and we don't want to kill ourselves as well. Yeah, no, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that eh, it, it's always a combination. When you're protesting, for a protest to work, it's a combination of uh, both. So not everybody can be on the streets. Mm -hmm. you understand not and not everybody will be on the streets but you need a combination of the street protests and the silent protest the mm -hmm. silent protest is where uh some not uh, some uh essential and non-essential services are shut down yes so that one one is transportation transportation is key Without transportation, yeah, even though, even we are in a digital, even though we are in a digital age, uh, when you shut down transportation, Nigeria is still a, you know, uh, uh, physical economy uh, template. It's still running on a physical economy template. So we, we, we go about places a lot, even though mm -hmm. we have mobile phones and, I mean, and the digital platform. But if you shut down, uh, uh, what do you call um Transportation, transportation yeah? yeah if you shut down uh if people stock up and shut down food supply that's another but that means the people are going to suffer 
because no, no, people can get their food. No, 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 you can't stop. You can't stop. No, people can get their food. People can get their food actually, but the problem is is no. You can if you're organized. If you're organized, it's salary. You can stock up. Salary. Hold on. You can stock up. Eh? No, even if you can't stock up, because the food sellers can actually be exempt from that in a way, right? You, you so maybe cannot, from if, this if, time if, to this if, time. If you open the market, you from this time to this you time, you know what, you know what will group. hit? You know what will hit the nation? If those who are working in the oil rigs, those producing the crude, uh -huh. if paying that kind of thing and you paying can just shut down for these 10 days voila he goes kind of there things. because they know where their milk is being coming from they know where they they know what is butchering their bread mm -hmm. shut down the food production let them not produce what they produce on a daily basis let there be no food supply you know they've, already, they've spent all the money for this year i'll show you know all the money yes. that so the process can be like that it's not it can be segmented that so that the industries that will affect the government will be the ones that will shut down yeah. kind of thing yeah because that would be more helpful and that way you can but, but the truth about in all honesty the the, the, the i don't know about shutting down food supply i'm not i don't think shutting down food, food supply is fair no we said because already that we don't want Nigeria that they have enough money to buy food down for 10 days no 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 what that's not what i'm trying to say it's not in definition a definite shutdown of the market do you understand me it's intermittent do you understand that me? that's it, okay if you're if you're doing if you're doing a protest okay you say okay stock up for se stock up food store for seven days after seven days the market will open then we are not stopping this the uh this thing, but you can go and restock you understand me but the truth about it is that the, pro the problem with opening market is that the bulk of those who are involved in the protest eh, are in the uh, market market people uh, oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. of the society. Right. Now, the moment you let all of them go back and go while they are still doing their business, then there will be nobody the to do the people, protest. The people who are buying from them go back to the market to buy. You will lose the steam of the protest. So it's, we'll it has it. to be managed. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. It, has, it has to be coordinated. It has to be managed with the market leaders and then uh, and the, uh, within the market leaders and the uh, organizers of the protest. That's what I'm trying to say. You have I just to, wonder, I just wonder have, if... May, maybe you say, okay, we're doing protests Monday to Friday. Saturday, Sunday, you can go and stock up. We'll start. A, we'll continue again on. Saturday. I really wonder if they've planned it. Yes, because it's not. I think it's not enough to just say protest now and everybody will just. It has to be really properly planned and organized. Yeah, right? market can open Saturday, Sunday. Mm. We we'll continue again on Monday, because, because government work is done between Monday and Friday. Because everything about um, even when you are angry sometimes, and you may not even be angry sometimes, the way you want to react, it should just be in order to to get your final goal right the impact yeah yes Create the, impact, the impact, impact that you're going to have because there's no point if we just make noise and we are we're a rowdy bunch and at the end of the day we don't we only end up losing lives yeah it's not about rowdiness it must be it must be it must be uh it must be deliberate it must be focused structured deliberate and, and, structured. and it must be it must be structured and it must be targeted targeted it's yeah. not the hair and it must be planned it's not Have just okay. It? It's not just about indefinite strike, or indefinite uh, protest. No. Yes. It must be struck. Okay, we we'll protest Monday to Friday, which grounds government activities. Have you heard anything about the about the plan for the protests? Have you heard anything? I've not really followed. You know, understand okay. me, but I, I I've heard about the protest, but the planning. Well, they will not. They will not make the planning so so open so, to everybody okay, so, those, yeah. those who are involved in the in the protest yeah i really what, hope that what, what i would say is that they should not make it a seven day protest do you understand me target the days and let let people refuel if you if you if, if you protest monday to friday because if it goes on too long yeah let it be where we over are wearing. saturday and sunday mm -hmm. monday again you begin again you hit the ground running again just make sure that during the times, except for like uh, uh, Ajiri said, maybe the oil oil uh, producer uh, staff. Anything that is going to pinch the government very much. Yes, uh -huh. yes, do that over seven days. But all the others, 
let come back, refuel Saturday, Sunday, hit the ground running again on Monday. I, yes. I think that would be the best uh, so that people can refuel. And in fact, going forward, um, for anything like this, we actually have to start thinking seriously about getting strategies to plot these things. Be and yeah. if we really want to achieve something, because we can't wait until that day, and then that day that we're really pushed to the world, then we wake up and say we're reacting in anger. Because a lot of the times when we react in anger, we haven't planned and thought out what we're going to do. So at the end of the day, we're not really trying to achieve a particular aim. We have a goal in mind, but we didn't plan it properly, right? Yeah. We need to have the proper blueprints. Yeah. One of the major problems of Nigeria is the institutional framework. That's what, since we came back from uh, military rule, that was what a lot of people, a lot of our politicians, a lot of political leaders and elites are supposed to have been focused on creating and uh, creating different institutional framework. That mm -hmm. means no matter who is, when you create the institutional framework, no matter who is there, they are bound to follow the institutional framework. They can try to game it one way or the other, but the institutional framework, if it's strong enough, will, will resist it. That's the reason, that's the problem that we have. Everybody just comes and does whatever they like. There's no yeah, because the people who have been sitting in power yeah. don't don't want that because yeah, when so once you have the that, that we have. it defeats the purpose for which they got into those seats in the first place. Yeah. So There's it's not no going process. to be them. It's not going to be them to do it. It's going to be the rest who are not going into political seats right now yeah. that will come up with something and then have to figure out a way to make it to put it in place. And Nigeria must but I also know, I also know something fast. about life, though. You know, I think we, 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 we get to a point in life where we realize that without a sacrifice, you have to Yeah, make a we sacrifice. need to start making that sacrifice. Without a sacrifice, you're, you're not going to get what it is that you really want. Yeah. It's not going to fall into our lives. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. So this is done. Thank you so much for your contributions. And... Let's just quickly put out these parts so that if there's anything that can be helpful with it, if there's anything in, in the plans for the protest that maybe just a single word or something that we've said here can help, whether for this protest or for some, some other one in future. Hmm. Keep our fingers crossed. We do our yeah. best. Yeah. It's still our country, so whatever yeah. will make it, whatever will bring about the turnaround. All right. Okay, then. Thank you for being with us on this episode. Let's end this. Um, All right, bye, guys. Yeah.